Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. You know, our center is dedicated to excellence in teaching and in expanding your knowledge and skills. And one of the toughest things that we encounter as dentists is the class two composite. So I thought I'd make a short video on how to perform this particular procedure. We have a DO on tooth number five and it's already been isolated with rubber dam. And you can see that the rubber dam is well inverted. And I know that some people advocate the use of floss ties, but I don't find that to be necessary if you invert the rubber dam properly. This is a contoured matrix band made by Garrison. We're gonna use the G-ring from the same company on top of a wedge, and I like using a wooden wedge. I feel that they compress better and create a better seal than the plastic wedges. This is the entire assembly, and you notice that I've put the, the ring towards the distal so that I'll have plenty of room to work in this box area. But the ring will only be on for a short period of time. We're gonna take this class two, and we're gonna do something called the centripetal wall technique. So let me show you how that works. We're gonna go ahead and apply our conditioner, our acid etch in this particular case etching beyond the margins, at least a millimeter and a half to two millimeters. And we're gonna go ahead and rinse and then we're gonna suction that so that it stays moist. Apply our primer and blow the primer thin so that it doesn't pool up in any of the areas up against the band. The adhesive would be the next step. We're gonna go ahead and light cure this for the appropriate amount of time. I personally like utilizing a fourth generation or a universal composite system. After light curing, we're ready to build the wall. I'm gonna be utilizing a Denton opaque shade here. And we're gonna condense this into the box, careful to condense into the corners. And at the point where we have the box filled to the level of the pulpal, I'm gonna utilize an interproximal carver, which is a very thin instrument, and I'm gonna push the material up towards the band. In so doing, it will rise up and create the marginal ridge contours that we're looking to create. The only thing you really have to do is remove a lot of excess that might form around the periphery. Another important step is to use the IPC to push the composite back away from the band near the adjacent tooth so that you create an occlusal embrasure. We'll go ahead and light cure this for the appropriate amount of time and at this point, we're gonna remove the ring matrix band and wedge assembly. In other words, we've just taken our class two and we've converted it into a class one, a much easier procedure with greater access. I drilled a hole through the band so that I can easily pull the band out. Some companies have holes in the bands. We use an instrument and just easily pull the band out. And then I'm gonna fill that defect with a flowable composite. You could probably use a packable composite as well. And I'm gonna spread that around a little bit just so that it fills in any of the corners of this particular preparation, which was a little bit too sharp for a typical composite. It was really prepared for an amalgam. We're gonna remove any excess flowable because we don't need any extra flowable in here. We need to use that space for our contour buildup section coming next. Let's go ahead and light cure this. And now we're gonna to start to build up the composite. And I'm going to build this under contoured. In other words, I'm going to make sure that the outer surface is below the final contour that we want to achieve. And we're going to utilize instruments that I like to use called the Composculpt instruments. And I have these available at my website in the store area if you are interested in getting a set of these. And they're, I think they're pretty good. They've got a lot of different uh, tips and angles and shapes and things like that that can really help you out. So we're gonna to continue to build the contour, once again, under contoured with a dentin type of composite. This is not a super translucent. This is more of an opaque dentin in the shade that you want for the final restoration. This is another one of the Composculpt tips. After light curing this increment, we're gonna go ahead and continue to build these increments. We're kind of like building the lobes of a tooth. We're kind of thinking like we were a little amenoblast, uh, just sort of building up enamel in its little specific areas with the shapes that the tooth wants to have. 
it's kind of fun to do it this way. And also you mitigate the issues with C factor by building up your composite in this particular manner. Now it's under contoured, so it would not be an occlusion at this point, but this is the perfect time to use a little bit of tints. I'm not a big fan of using tints usually because most patients are perfectly happy with a composite that has more of a monochromatic untinted look, but I thought today I'd just show you how I might use tints. This is just to give a little bit of this rich sort of dentin look to it. We're going to go ahead at this point like here this tint and these are all hybrid materials. These tints are hybrid and they're very strong. Then we're going to mix up some brown tint and this is going to be maybe for a little bit of a deeper looking stain. I don't like placing a lot of stains on the surface of the composite because they wear off a little bit too easily. Uh, or oftentimes when you're adjusting occlusion or doing a final polish, you polish them away. So I like to build them intrinsically, much in the same way that a ceramist would build a crown or an onlay, uh, placing these stains inside of the restoration and making them a lot more subtle. I want you to remember that this is an under-contoured restoration, so now we're going to be placing a translucent composite, so this would be a composite that was meant to be replicating enamel and we're going to place this over this under contoured dentin layer which has the stains in it. And we continue to build these lobes so that they are appearing a little bit more natural. I'm utilizing now the IPC. Now I'm switching over to the pointy instrument in the Composculpt system. So you just continue to develop the morphology based on uh, what you believe it should be like due to the adjacent teeth, uh, your knowledge of the contours of the triangular ridges, uh, the occlusal relationship, etc. And uh, this is uh, the important final step where you need to make things look uh, like they're appropriate for the particular tooth you're working on. So take your time and keep the operatory light or your headlamp light away from the uh, area where you're working so that you're not going to prematurely cure these composite resins. So we'll go ahead and light cure this layer and then we'll build one more layer uh, to bring this nearly to full contour. It's still slightly under contoured. because I want to leave a little bit of room at the end for a translucent enamel shade. These copper sculpt instruments are just fantastic. They were originally developed by Didier Dici, a phenomenal composite placer, restorative dentist from Switzerland. And now you can see that I'm developing some microanatomy, these little nuances that we sometimes see in teeth and it's quite easy to do with this instrument. Now after light curing I'm going to go ahead and remove flash now and I'm using the 7102 burr. It's one of my favorite all-around burrs because it's pointy and yet it also has a shape that allows you to create uh, the triangular ridges and the grooves quite nicely. And I'm going to make sure that I can get floss between the teeth so I'm going to use a contact EZ to remove any residual bonding material that might have just flown around out there and it works pretty well just to crack right through the teeth and then we just check this with dental floss and it really has a nice good tight snap there. So I'm pretty happy with the contact. Then we're going to go into uh, some basic gross finishing here with uh, OptiDiscs and I'm not going for the high polish yet. I would do that at the very end. So I still have an under contoured restoration and I want to get everything just about finished and then I'm going to treat the surface with acid etch, clean it, bond, and then I'm going to place an opaque layer because I didn't like how much this composite was looking a little too too dark and then I'm going to place translucent enamel on top of that to get our final contour. This is the last step that we do to lock everything in. So all of that anatomy that we placed in there is just being copied with this final layer. Any of the stains that we used underneath are deep down inside and they would just barely show through. 
but they do create some minor effects in this composite at the final uh, surface layer. You can see a little bit of the groove material stain or tint material showing through. By pre-contouring the restoration you don't end up removing all of your final translucent layer and you end up having a restoration that doesn't require a lot of occlusal adjustment or changes that might affect your final uh, look of the restoration. I think it turned out okay. It's certainly not a perfect match, but I like the opacity. It makes it look kind of interesting. So I definitely want to thank you again for spending some time with me in this little class 2 restoration. Lots more videos coming. Make sure you give me feedback. Thank you.